Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. The first day of Hearthstone new miniset reveals are now done, and eight new cards were revealed. So let's take a look at them. There's some, there's some pretty interesting stuff here, including new legendary Sylvanas card and a new legendary Jailer card. But first of all, we have due process and this, this is a pretty interesting card, and I think this card looks really, really strong. Two mana. For the rest of the game, players draw an extra card at the start of their turn. So everyone draws two cards instead of one, or if you play two copies of this, everyone draws three cards. Like, you could try to do some milling stuff with this, maybe, at some point. Well, milling is not available in standard anyway, so I guess probably not. But also, there are some intriguing opportunities for Druid specifically with this. First of all, of course, we have White Heart Guffin Druid, so Druid can have 20 mana. If you have 20 mana and you're drawing a lot of cards, well, you can also spend a lot of cards. On the other hand, that kind of Druid deck already has quite good drawing options, and also sometimes before it actually gets to that 20 mana, it's kind of stuck with a bunch of cards in hand, so then drawing more cards will just result in you discarding cards. But there's also another Druid archetype, which is the Aggro Druid. Aggro Druid used to run composting, give a minion's death rattle, draw a card, but currently it doesn't do that, and Aggro Druid does sometimes run out of juice. So I'm wondering whether due process could be used in Aggro Druid, and then you can just play all of those cards, because you can easy, pretty easily play all of the cards when you're playing as aggro. On the other hand, you're also giving your opponent more cards, so if they're like a control deck, and then they will be able to find answers, or they just end up burning a lot of cards. A lot of, lot of interesting stuff going on with due process. I really like this card, and I think this has potential to be pretty strong. Then again, historically, between one-third and one-half of miniset cards are not very useful, and I have a bit of a hard time finding a use for Murder Accusation. It's a rogue spell, two-mana spell, choose a minion, destroy it after another enemy minion dies. Well, it is only two mana, so you could prep this to make it cost zero. There are some ways, like very fast cycle decks, cycle decks that use stuff like Necro Draga, for example, or the Sinstone Graveyard. Something like that, and then you're able to maybe cycle this, and you choose some bigger enemy minion, and then you backstab a smaller minion, and then the big one also dies, and that buys you time and gets you all your stuff. Like, that's the best case scenario. But on the downside, murder accusation requires a target, so it is conditional, and it's not always easy to have all those other minions. It's not easy to always have like that big target. As a rogue, you don't want to go for very long games, so there won't be a lot of really big minions on the board, typically. So, yeah, we'll see. I'm not very optimistic about this card. And then there is this really intriguing shaman card, Totemic Evidence. Choose a basic totem and summon it. Infuse with three totems. Summon all four instead. So this is clearly, of course, a card for token decks. But the thing about token decks, I talked about token decks in a previous video, and why are token shaman decks failing? Token shaman decks are failing because currently they have tons of ways to shaman basic totems. Well, look at that, that also summons basic totems, yeah. It's like great that you can summon basic totems. But the problem is that those basic totems are totally useless. They are totally, totally useless. Totem shaman only wins games when it draws the stone right. Battle cry for the rest of the game. Your totems have plus two attack. And yeah, having board full after board full after board full of two twos and maybe a bloodlust is a lot better than having board full after board full of board full of zero twos, which just don't do anything. So the mini set would have to give totem shaman some way to give those totems more attack. If it doesn't, then this card will be totally useless. If it does, this card could be really, really strong. And then some neutral legendary cards with Sylvanas, the accused. Six mana, five, five. Flashback to old Sylvanas Windrunner. Battlecry, destroy an enemy minion. Infuse seven, take control of it instead. Whereas the old Sylvanas, Death Rattle, take control of a random enemy minion. Six mana, hard removal. Yeah, are there enough big targets? Are there enough big individual targets in the meta? That's always the question. And then Infuse 7. Infuse 7 means that a lot of minions will have to die. And then even if they do and you get it infused, are there going to be enough value targets that you're going to steal with your Sylvanas? Very meta-dependent. 
if the meta has really big individual targets, then either destroying them or taking control of them can both be useful, so it doesn't always even matter if you're able to infuse Sylvanas. But do you really need that hard removal? That's, that's another question. This Sylvanas effect, by the way, is targeted, whereas the previous Sylvanas was random, so a bit of a difference there. Usually targeted is better, but then again... Another new legendary that is coming is the Jailer. 10 mana 10, then battle cry, destroy your deck. For the rest of the game, your minions are immune. What does it mean that your minions are immune? Well, minions that are immune, first of all, they cannot take any damage. And second of all, you cannot target them with anything. So, like that Sylvanas, you just can't choose the target. But they can still be destroyed. Any effect that destroys minions like all minions or random minions can still affect them. So let's say you're playing Warlock, someone plays Jailer, you play Twisting Nether, destroy all minions, all of those minions will still be destroyed. Priest also has access to a bunch of this kind of hard removal that just doesn't target anything and doesn't destroy true damage. On the other hand, playing like Sire Denatrius, once Jailer has been played, means that none of those minions can die to Denatrius's damage. But then again, Denatrius might also just kill the player so maybe that doesn't really even help. Either way, that's a big beef minion, and yeah, we'll see whether, whether there's actually going to be any uses for it, but it sure is a refreshing new card. For other neutral cards in the miniset, we're getting the Afterlife Attendant. 3 mana 3 for your infused cards also infuse while in your deck. Yay, you can build an even bigger Denatrius. But then again, the Afterlife Attendant has to actually stay on the board for those infuses to happen, and that's just not going to happen. So you would have to have, like, infuse cards that require very few infuses and would be super, super important that you can't tutor for them. So I don't think this card has any value. On the other hand, this card probably has even less value. It's tight-lipped witness. 3 mana 2 5 secrets can't be revealed. Yeah, because we have such a secret meta going on right now. It's an anti-secret tech card for a meta that currently doesn't have any secrets. Does this mean that there's going to be a bunch of secret support coming in the miniset? Does this mean that they thought secret rogue would be dominant force? Surely they didn't think that. No, no that, that just didn't happen. Either way, tight-lipped witness, I don't see how this could do anything. But the final card that was revealed today is an interesting one. It's more disruption. They're just really, really enjoying this disruption. Well, just before Ixar left Blizzard, he did say that he enjoyed how people took disruption quite well. So we added more disruption to your disruption. With Soul Seeker, 5 mana 3 3, Battle Cry, swap this with a random minion from your opponent's deck. So if your opponent's deck, if it has minions that on average are going to be better than something with 5 mana, then maybe this is useful, because it swaps that with random minion in the deck, so as a battle cry, you play it, it goes into the opponent's deck, and the opponent's minion comes straight to your board. Also, fun, fun little thing, if you happen to get a colossal minion, I mean, colossals activate their effect whenever they are summoned. It doesn't matter how they get on the board, the colossal effect is activated. So something like Hydralodon, for example, would immediately summon those heads, but it wouldn't give it battle cry, so those heads would not have rush. But still, colossals can have some pretty interesting effects with Soul Seeker. You might also be able to pick up something like a Sire Denatrius from the opponent's deck, so yeah, very unreliable because it's pretty totally random, but could sometimes produce quite hilarious results. Those were all the cards that were revealed on day one. I don't think there was anything immediately like super, super strong, but especially that Totem Shaman card. If they give Totem Shaman something to give attack to the totems, then it might get scary. This time the reveal season only lasts for four days. This was day one, so three more days to go, and I will be taking a look at all of the cards as they come. Thank you for watching. Click like and subscribe if you enjoyed this, and a special thanks to all of my Patreon supporters, YouTube members, and Twitch subscribers who make all of these videos possible.